Hi, Peter Charles here, folks for Life Fly Fishing. And today I'd like to talk about leaders for wet flies and streamers. Now, if you've ever looked at some of my fly tying videos or some of my other uh, videos of fly design and fishing, you'll hear me talk about leaders for wet flies and streamers. I thought probably it'd be a good idea if I sort of encapsulated it all in one video and let, instead of having people having to pick around to find out what I do with leaders, because I do something that's quite unconventional. If you have ever read the literature, followed the chit chat online, or gone to a seminar, you might hear somebody say, well, all you need is three feet of maxima and away you go. And that's true to a large extent. I mean, tons of fish have been caught on a fly tied to three feet of maxima. Uh, but let's face it, we don't know about the ones that weren't caught because it was tied to three feet of maxima. We only know the ones that were caught. So uh, I have a philosophy about fishing in general, and which I apply to this, is don't give the fish a reason to refuse your offering. Uh, the less reasons we give them to refuse, the more fish we catch, as simple as that. So if I can do something that improves my odds, I'll do it. And one of those is using a lot longer leaders on sinking lines than most people would do, or sink tips for that matter, it doesn't matter which. And I started this thinking way back over 50 years ago when I started fly fishing. As I said a few times, my first fish came on a type uh, three level full sinker. And when I put it together, I had nobody to show me how to fly fish. I had nobody to tell me anything. I had to figure it all out for myself. And instinctively, I did not like the idea of a short leader near my uh, that type three line. So I pulled off about uh, somewhere eight to 10 feet of mono off of my Mitchell 300. And I don't know what kind of knot I used to attach it, but I managed to attach the leader to the end of the full sinker and promptly started catching bass with it. So uh, right from the very beginning, I'm running eight to 10 feet of leader off of my sinkers and I have ever since. I do not like short leaders on the end of my sinking lines. And I can hear the the comments going already. Well, you won't get your fly down. Da, 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 da. Yeah, know all about that. Here's what I'm going after, and this is why I do what I do. And I I'm aware there there are aggressive fish out there who will uh, take your car keys hung on the end of 10 gauge copper wire. But I'm not worried about those fish. I'm going to pick those fish up regardless. I'm talking about the shy ones, the skittish ones, the reluctant ones. Uh, how about getting those as well? Isn't that a cool idea? So this is all about getting as many fish as possible out of a run and giving them the least uh, reason to uh, reject our offering. So my philosophy can divide it up into basically two things. First off is that the fly dominates the leader not the other way around. We do not want the leader dominating the fly, which means I'm going for the longest, skinniest leader I can get just so I can get that movement in the fly. I want the fly to ride level. Like these trout flies, these trout wet flies are tight, quite small. And if I put them on the end of 15 pound fluorocarbon, well, they're going to be all kind of weird angles coming through the water and they won't swim properly. So they've got to be on light trout tippet for them to swim naturally. But if I'm working with these wet flies or these streamers, then sure, 10 pound, 15 pound, that works fine because those flies are heavy enough and big enough and bulky enough that they dominate the leader, even if it's as much as 15 pound. So that's number one. I always make sure the fly dominates the leader. And the other thing too, is I go for as much vertical and horizontal separations as I possibly can get between the fly and the end of the fly line. I feel that it's important to get that separation because if the fly line is too close to the fly, that's where you can spook the skittish fish. Not the aggressive ones, but the skittish ones. I've seen this on multiple occasions and I've even done it deliberately once just to see. Fish can be swept out of a run by your fly line. A sinking sink tip or sinking line or sink tip doesn't matter they will actually move 
if the fly comes towards them uh, and the fly line is close to the fly, you'll see the whole contraption approaching the fish and you'll see the fish veer off. In one particular case, uh, I actually pushed this Chinook salmon right up against the bank and I just held my line there to see if it, that Chinook would move and it just stood there next to the bank, just quivering. I pulled my line out, poof, the Chinook was gone. So you can literally sweep fish out of a run by running your line too low. So what I'm doing with this, you know, the horizontal and the vertical separation is I'm keeping the fly line well away from any chance of it sweeping a fish out of the run. So that's one thing. I can go down a run and even if I don't get all the fish, I can come back up and go back down again, come back up, go down again, because I am not sweeping the fish out of the run with a very, very low swinging fly line. So my sink tip or my full sinking line is never down in the stones. The fly might be, but the line isn't. So that's, that's a big deal about that as well. So how do I put this together? Well, I've got this thing here and it's got 10, 12, 15 and 20 pound fluorocarbon in here. And I use exclusively fluorocarbon for creating leaders. Uh, this particular set of spools will be used for steelhead, for salmon, for smallmouth bass, largemouth bass, and for striped bass. The only thing I'll add to the striped bass is some uh, saltwater uh, heavy mono, uh, the, that hard mono, uh, as a bite guard. But other than that, I'm basically using this spool for all of that. And what I'm doing is I'm picking up this fluorocarbon and um, I'm loading these myself. So I carry these with me all of the time and when they get empty, I just go back to the, my stock and reload them. That's good for uh, typical um, bass and salmon and steelhead. When I'm talking about trout, I'm working more with uh, fluorocarbon that uh, is, comes on the trout tippets because we have to go down in size, we have to have a more supple uh, material, we have, need a material that's built for fly fishing because those flies are so small. And again, it goes back to that idea of you don't want the leader dominating the fly. I need a supple leader, I need a skinny leader, I need a leader that'll move. Next thing I'll talk about is how long I make the leaders. Typically for um, uh, full sinkers and sink tips and intermediates, I'm running eight to 10 feet normally. And one of the reasons why I do that is not just the separation issue, it's also the movement. If you put a, um, a fly out on the end of a long skinny leader and just hold it in current and watch it, it's doing this. If you tether your fly to the end of your sink tip on some short heavy mono, there it is, a little quiver, that's it. It looks tethered. So as soon as you extend your leader, you're extending the movement of your fly and you're giving it an ability to kick around in the current. It looks far more natural. I've actually had steelhead hit a fly that was simply suspended in current fairly high up and they literally came up and hit it. And it was sitting there for maybe five minutes. I could see them. I just left it there. And I thought one of these days, one of those is going to come up. Yep. Bam. Hit it. So it can look very seductive if you've got a lot of movement and the key to that movement is the long leader. So how do I put my leaders together? Well, as I say, I've got these spools. I normally, if I'm building a very long leader, say uh, upwards of 15 feet, I've done that for intermediates. Uh, cold, clear water, I'll really extend the leader. I'll use a 20 pound butt section and that butt, sec butt section will be 40 to 50% of the leader. And then I'll step down 15, 12, and 10. And the 15 and 12 are relatively short. They're taking up about a third of the liter in total. And the remainder will be made up of the tippet section. Uh, for knots, I'm using triple surgeon's knots. And I had a lot of bad experiences with fluorocarbon when I started uh, because I was having knot failures. Part of it was I was using this lousy copolymer, which would shred when I tightened a knot. Um, the other thing, I wasn't being very careful about testing. So if you've ever given up on fluorocarbon because of knot failure, here's the trick. 
You tie the knot, wet it good, snug it down gently. Don't yank it down. Snug, just snug it down until you see that that um, triple surges knot roll over and turn into a figure eight. Then you just grab the main line, leave, let the tags go, and give it a yank. It does two things. It seats the knot beautifully, and if you've done anything wrong, it fails then. It doesn't fail in the water. Because what I was doing before, when I was having knot failures, I was doing a gentle pull. I was putting a lot of pressure on the knot, and they weren't breaking. They wouldn't break under a steady pull, but they would break under a jerk. And so when fish if, if fish hit hard, bang, and I would snap the knot off. So if you're having trouble with fluorocarbon knots, try a wet them very well. And I know some people say not to wet fluorocarbon. I don't. I disagree with that. I wet mine thoroughly. I'll I'll just gently snug it down using both the tags and the main lines, and then I just grab the main lines and yank. Obviously, if I'm using 7X, I'm not yanking very hard, but I am still yanking to get a seat down. Okay, why fluorocarbon over mono? Well, okay, I'm a nerd. <laughs> I'll admit to it. Stopwatch, graduated cylinder, I've timed them. And fluorocarbon sings, sit, sorry, fluorocarbon sinks at roughly uh, four times faster than mono. Mono is barely sinks at all. And one of the other problems I found with mono is if you're using a long leader and a very light fly, um, the surface tension uh, of the water can hold mono up, can actually hold up the fly and hold up the leader. Um, so if you're trying to sink a, a light fly on a long leader, you've got to use fluorocarbon to get it to penetrate the surface uh, tension of the water. Uh, and as I say, I've, I've watched my leaders stay hung up in the surface tension until they've gone part of the way around and then they start to go down. So um, use fluorocarbon for that reason. It's denser and it sinks better and it penetrates the uh, surface tension. And the other reason is because it's denser, currents act on it less than mono. So keep in mind you've always got that upward push of the current on any line or leader that is sloping down in the water. The current is pushing it up. The skinnier it is, the less influence that water has on the leader. So it gives your chance of your fly getting even lower. So if I uh, used, let's say, three foot of 15 pound maxima in a standard wet fly, uh, the wet fly would maybe be a smidge lower than the end of the fly line. If I used uh, 10 foot of fluorocarbon uh, going down from 15 to 10 and I've got the same fly on the end of the, that leader. I'm probably down about that much, and that fly is going like this. So you can get more separation and you get more depth just by going longer and going skinnier. Okay, now let's take a look at some other things here. I keep talking about flies. Well, my flies are a little unique. If you've ever watched any of my videos, you'll see that even when I'm tying these classic wet flies and these classic streamers, my patterns tend to be very sparse. I use trying to use a minimal material, except on the few occasions I deliberately go bushy. But most of the time I'm going pretty sparse. And the reason for that is sparse flies penetrate. They sink well on their own. And again, back to my nerdy roots, I've actually done sink tests on my flies to see how far they go down, how fast they go down. Because you want your fly to always sink faster than your sink tip or your sinking line. So if your fly is a slow sinker, uh, you're going to have problems because there's this assumption. One of the main reasons why guys go with three foot of maxima is they're assuming that the fly line will, their, their T14 will drag down the fly. Well, as I've talked to you in the past, don't assume that. If you have a very, very bulky fly that's got a lot of buoyant material in it, a rabbit wing, for example, it can literally hold up the end of the T14. So that's the wrong thinking. The fly should get down on its own. You know, it, it, if ideally it should be going down faster than T14. And then when you do that, when you have a fly that can get down fast, I mean, if I took one of these streamers, that's unweighted, that little brown trout, that's unweighted. If I drop that in water, I guarantee you it's going down five, five to six inches per second, maybe faster. 
All right, so and, and another cute way that you can increase your drop speed, tie a loop knot, you know, like a lefty cray loop knot. And don't tie like a, a clinch where that's a, um, a firm connection. Because what happens when you tie a loop knot, you get the, your leader coming off it. As soon as it hits the water, the fly goes nose down and goes whoosh, and the loop knot allows the fly to pivot and goes nose first straight down. So if you uh, have a firm knot, like a clinch knot, or you've pulled a uni uh, knot tight, then when you pull it through the water and it hits the water, it goes down more of an angle and so it doesn't penetrate as fast. So one of the tricks to getting your flies down is simply use a, a non-slip loop knot to tie your fly to the leader. And down it goes. So it's one little thing that you can do that makes a difference. But, you know, well-designed flies, well-tied flies that don't have a lot of surplus material are going to go down really fast anyway, even if you tie them with a firm knot. So let's wrap this up. You want to use fluorocarbon because it sinks much better than mono. It's four times faster the sink rate. It's skinnier in the water per, uh, you know, according to the braking strength. It, that's the reason why it sinks. It's denser. So it, uh, you, when you use a long skinny leader, there's less upward pressure from the water. There's less, less lift. Watch out for your knots. Let's explain how to tighten them. If you tighten them properly, always jerk them tight. That way you'll find out if you've got a problem because it'll snap right there. You don't lose it on the fish, you lose it there. Um, the longer the leader that you can get away with, the more movement you're going to get out of your fly. And you're also going to get that horizontal separation and the vertical separation, which means you don't need as much sink tip. You don't need that massive amount of T14. You could get away with T10 or T7 or a Type 3, 15-foot Type 3. Because when that long 10-foot leader, the fly's down another 8 inches a foot beyond the tip of the, the sink tip. You're getting that separation between the end of your fly line and the fish, which gives you a better chance of making repeat passes down a run and catching fish on every pass. I've experienced that quite often. A lot of people will go down a run and then give up on it. I'll go down a run and make two, three passes through it because with that separation, I know that I'm not sweeping fish out of the run like a windshield wiper as I'm going down the run. So the whole idea behind this is to make sure that you've got some life on the end of that line. That fly looks alive and is moving. And the last thing is make sure that your fly dominates the leader, that the leader does not dominate the fly because it will really look tethered and it will come through the water at odd angles and it would just look awful. It just won't fish properly. So keep all that in mind. And I will tell you right now, if you start using long skinny fluorocarbon leaders on the end of your sinking lines or your sink tips, along with sparse flies, watch out for your, um, your hit rate to go up. You're going to get more fish because you will be spooking less fish and you will be appealing to the skittish ones as well as the aggressive ones. So give it a try. What can you lose except for a couple of feet of fluorocarbon? Cheers.